mixing things up a little bit. Hello, everybody. Thank you so very much for joining me here on another episode of Blooms for You. I've had a few staggered clips of things that have been in bloom. They, the Ceratolabium, for example, is not in bloom anymore. But as you can see, we're going to mix it up a little bit. Hibiki is on the way out. And astonishingly, I've got my Peggy Ruth Carpenter chucking out spikes. They are opening all at the same time that it's making it difficult to allocate individual spikes to individual subscribers and those that leave comments. So I've made the executive decision of the committee of one that we're going to be looking at Peggy Ruth Carpenter, Alicera or Bealara, depending on what your preference is. I don't know either way. I just know she's pretty and she smells yums. Pepper steak is all I can say. If you like pepper steak, this orchid is just going to go right up your nose and you will be enjoying the fragrance. I personally love it. If I had had this orchid and I was gonna name her, who is Peggy Ruth Carpenter, I've been trying to find out on the internet, I would have called this Ruth's Chris, but that's just me. <laughs> Lots of jibber jabber to begin with, but I wanted to say thank you to everybody who clicked on the video. Thank you so much to all my subscribers here that have joined Ninja Orchids, have contributed to the comment section that, you know, everything that YouTube throws at you as somebody who's trying to put out videos and then everybody that comes and actually responds and reacts. That's a thank you. And Peggy Ruth Carpenter is here showing off her blooms for the likes of yourself. That's the purpose of this video, to dedicate my blooms to everybody that watches and subscribes. I would appreciate it if you subscribed, if you haven't already, but I do this series every time there's enough material to put together into a clip that would warrant a little blooms for you episode. And I believe this one is number 20. Who'd have thunk? Anywho, I have more blooms available and before I actually talk about this orchid a little bit more let's go and see what else has been in bloom or is still in bloom. Sharky is back. Sharky Sharky. This is Dendrobium ceratolabium. For obvious reasons you can see on the lip the serrated lip there and orchids 365 I am rushing to film these two, even though the second bud has not opened entirely, because I want to dedicate these blooms to you, but I do have some problems because we've had some extremely humid days recently with a lot of rain. And despite the fact I did not expose these blooms to those weather conditions, the high humidity destroyed the complete opening of the other two blooms that I've got in the back here. So in order to get this done and not lose the opportunity, the moment to dedicate my Dendrobium serratilabium, which I call lovingly Sharky because of that superb detail on the lip there, I best film them now, even though both are not quite open or miss the mark completely. I have my Ceratolabium on my community mount. This is not the foliage of the Ceratolabium. This is the foliage of the Aphyllum in the back. The Ceratolabium foliage is up here. These are the two new canes of this year. And it is growing another one in the back, which based on the angle of how I've got this positioned, eh, isn't it fun digging through canes? It's back here. So I don't know if I can see that. It's a gorgeous day out today. And the sun is very, very blinding on the screen. One day technology should catch up with all of this reflection stuff. Needless to say, Ceratolabium blooms on deciduous canes and can bloom over and over again as dendrobiums do. But 
Orchid365. I don't see a comment of yours, but I guess when you subscribe, it actually showed up on my feed because I've got you on my list and I wouldn't know otherwise how to have gotten you on my list. So thank you very, very much for subscribing and for taking the time to watch my videos. I really appreciate it. So this little dendrobium has been a slow start for me the past two years that I've got it, but it has found its mojo. These two canes up here are doing really well, better than anything before. But it is a very nondescript little bloomer. It just doesn't do much. I treat it exactly the same way as I do everything on this mount. And if it's in active growth, it gets fertilized. And if it's not in active growth, I, it just gets some water with seaweed on occasions. I water mine over the winter. I do not give mine any dry winter rest at all. But I have a climate here in southern Spain that is a little bit different to maybe other environments. Like today, we have first week of November. I've got 25 degrees Celsius and I have a humidity of 52%. And my night temperatures have been so mild it literally, it warrants keeping the watering up. There is no fragrance on this Ceratolabium, and I don't expect there to be one even uh, with the bigger canes. I find that this one is just beautiful in its own right, and the pollinators would be attracted to that funky lip, even if there is no fragrance. Yeah, this is a really, really intricate one. I love it. Thank you very much, Orchid365. I really appreciate having you here. I hope that everything is fine in your part of the world. And this little Dendrobium ceratolabium bloom, the two of them, once the other one opens, they bloom for you. That, in the distance, is my popcorn haruri, Eonopsis popcorn haruri to be exact. And Karen Holden, let me go and get it. Let's have a closer look because she blooms for you. There we go. How about that? Get a bit closer. See if we can just appreciate the gorgeous little blooms here. Details. The details in the colors, the variation, no fragrance, mind, no fragrance. But look at these gorgeous little blooms. And I say small because it's like a fingerprint size. But the variation and the markings, the streaks in there, Karen, Isn't this gorgeous? <laughs> and anybody else that's watching, look at how that late afternoon sun is now hitting that branch. This is the first time my Eonopsis has ever branched for me on a spike. I really don't want to back out, but it's a shame not to appreciate all the blooms. And I have to say, from an orchid that was a little bit struggling at the beginning of the year, it is transitioning into a full Michael mount. I still have sphagnum moss around the edge, but I'm already going to work on getting it into the scouring pad material. In my terminology, that's a Michael mount. And here you see the older spike, but the orchid is recovering fantastically. And this is the new the growth from where the spike is coming. And I already have tucked in behind this other spiked growth right here, tucked in right there is the next new growth. So there's no potting this one up at all. This one is a climber and wouldn't be at all feasible in my preferred setup of LECA and self-watering. But my goodness, Karen Holden, I get carried away. Sorry for the jiggling. It's very difficult to try and feature this orchid. I've been around the block. I've been to the west side, south side. We are now on the east side. And on the east side, I had it up against the hedge and all sorts of things. 
in order not to get a whiteout. And it was a very cloudy day until just now when the sun started to peek out. So something is in the air that's washing out the colors, but not from this angle. So Karen Holden, you joined me in June of this year, and I just had it as well coming up like new subscriber on my notifications. I want to say thank you very, very much that you're here and dedicate my popcorn Haruri, Eonopsis popcorn Haruri to you as a sign of my appreciation and letting you know that I'm truly, truly grateful for having you here and for your support. This is getting better and better. I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. I'm just going to zoom in on this part of the spike. Look at this. What's not to like? Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Look who's back. Look who's back. Lelio Catlia, CG Robling, Blue Indigo. We have another spike. Who'd have thought? I mean, I love having these Catlias come up and all their growths bloom and all in one go. But then you only get them for that X amount of time. And this is like a bonus from the second growth of this year. I've got three more buds to give away. And I have Anadilla Canillo Canero. Also joined in June of this year, 2020. So Anadilla, your name sounds very Spanish, but I'm going to restrain myself because I don't know if that is true or not. And I do want you to understand why your name is being called out because it's to say thank you very much for being on my channel, for joining me here. And here we are with CG Rolling Blue Indigo blooming for you. Three amazing, amazing blooms. But what I want to try and do, the only thing I've noticed about this spike being coming into form is that it's not as tough as the other spike was in the season first off. So what I'm doing with my wire for the first time is using the support I normally put into my pots just in case, you know, not because I want to support the growth, but in case I need them. I want to show you how easy it is to lift up the blooms and get a little bit of a better presentation. Let's see, let's see. Patience is a virtue. At least if something happens now, I can say, well, Anna, Dia, you've seen them. I managed to get your name out on time. Why are you not working? You worked 10 minutes ago and I wanted to just do a demonstration. Come on. You know, it's like in German, we say that's the Vorführ effect. <laughs> when you want to show something and it doesn't work. But it did, it did. While nobody was watching, it worked. So there we are. It's the only reason I ever use my support. If I need to train a growth because it's not going in the direction I want it to and I didn't, don't catch it too late, or lift up some blooms. And then, 10 minutes ago, I didn't have these aphids on the blooms either. And now I'm really annoyed, as you might be able to tell, because this was all supposed to be so perfect for you, Anadia. I wanted to show them to you. Ah, gosh. So the fragrance is still very floral, not as powerful as the ones earlier in the season. But just look at that. How can you not? What is wrong with this spike? Absolutely nothing. The blooms have opened beautifully. They are, um, we'll have to see how much longer they will live. They are now open five days. Yeah, I think around five days because I had to wait. Normally after three days I can film blooms because then they're at their pristineness, if that's a word. 
but these wouldn't open fast enough and it's probably because of the season. And they do look a little bit more delicate and floppy and translucent. But they're still, they, they feel the same. They just have a small, like tiny different look about them. Let's go in a little bit closer. Can you see, or you can see the veining there in the petal. Yeah, that wasn't there during the summer. Felt like there was more substance to these blooms. But they, they, the texture feels exactly the same as in the summer, but they just look a little bit more translucent, which I find super interesting. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to show you another angle here. Look at that. It's like tissue paper. And yet so sturdy to the touch. Oh my goodness. Anadia. I hope that you see this video and I hope that you know that you are very much appreciated. I mean, seriously, how can you not? Thank you so, so much for being on my channel, for your support. I hope that you're safe in your part of the world. And just in case, I'm gonna say muchas gracias. Agradezco muchísimo. Somebody else that joined me, and thank you so much, Sue Berry. I really appreciate having seen your name come up on my notifications as a subscriber. I, even though I'm late, when orchids bloom, they bloom, and we have you know, some lists to go through. <laughs> Seems like June was so long ago, so... But hey, Sue Berry, this is my Brassocatlia binosa Wabash Valley. And it would appear, and you'd be right in saying, well, the other two blooms aren't quite open yet. And um, yes and no, let me explain. <laughs> These blooms are a little bit early in the season. I do not remember them blooming this time of year, which is now mid-November last year, I remember having them inside when they bloomed in the blooming alley section inside in my dining room. But we have had such a mild November that I could possibly be wrong. And in saying that, I want to make sure that I at least capture the blooms because if something radical were to happen weather-wise and I am distracted, then I could lose them and then I'd have to wait for the second spike to dedicate to you with two blooms. So there's a long-winded roundabout way of saying, thank you. <laughs> Just want to show you my Binosa Wabash Valley blooms. They are blooming for you. Whether they're fully open or going to stay like this because of the time of year and the temperatures, I do not know, but their colors are true. Absolutely true to form on the camera as in real life. And that is what is very important to me. If the orchid doesn't present herself and doesn't open up fully, like let's say this one, this bloom is fully open, then at least I have the colors to share. And I can be 100% sure that the orchid blooms are still in perfect condition when I film them and dedicate them to you, Sue. I do not see a comment from you, so you must have shown up in my notifications as a subscriber, and I wanted to say thank you ever, ever so much. And as with all my orchids, she grows in my preferred setup of LECA and self-watering, trying to keep it simple and make sure that I can take care of these orchids without getting too stressed out. If you haven't been around or haven't watched my videos before and you're new to this channel, this is what I do. I dedicate blooms to my subscribers, commenters, and this is my setup. Self-watering and lecca. Sue, I would like to say again, thank you very, very much. And here are my three blooms of Brassocatlia Pinosa Wabash Valley. She blooms for you.
So just to finish off here with this episode, I wanted to show you the back of this Bialara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. The back of the blooms are just as mesmerizing as the front. I love how the lip is pure white in the back there. Let me see. As well as if you look at it from the front, it has a pink blush. Yep, this orchid is a giver. I have it in my preferred setup of LECA and self-watering. And it is a beast. It is now probably ready to be divided at some point. These are very easy to come by and I don't want two or three of them in my collection. So in the meantime, I'm going to just keep it in the pot as it is and then we'll go from there. Now, this one, the only thing I can say that really, really, I have to keep an eye on it because of the pests. This one is attracting mealybugs, the little aphid or bug things that leave like a black residue as they go around. Scale is also attracted to it. So all this peppery scent, etc., seems to be also something that pests enjoy. So if you have this orchid and you have similar issues, let me know if you do or not, because I am on this orchid every day. I also peel back bud sheaths as they start to be mature enough to handle and not snap off because the pests are underneath these sheaths as well. And I would not get my blooms to develop cleanly if I didn't do that. And under every sheath, I would say I find pests. But this orchid has been absolutely phenomenal for me. Jumped into the LECA, had a few little issues to, on the transition phase, recovered, and it doesn't look like it had any problems whatsoever. And right now, these blooms are lasting about two weeks, round about that margin, around about two weeks. And I've had to, one spike I had to cut off, and now I have 10 left. So there's one here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I cut one off. That would be 10 and I counted 11. But anyway, I counted 11. 10 a while ago and another this little one in here popped up. But anyway, she is gorgeous. I love having her in my collection. Very easy to grow. Just keep those pests under control is all I can say. Thank you, everybody. Bealara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. She blooms for all of you. I appreciate having you here. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.